There we go. Is that all catching properly? Seems to be. Everyone said after the fact that um, RX was rusty. Oh, the dash drew. Makaro has the biggest dash in the whole game. But I don't know how well that translates to her dashing through characters. I think she can dash through a lot of people. Nice combo. Oh! Was that necessary? I feel like he might have been able to kill meterless there. Or maybe not meterless, maybe one bar. Mimora, I think, is one of the best. There's like four Makoto players who are just fucking good. Hi. Mimora is one of them. So is Mr. Momochi. So is Tominaga's so boss. Wow! I feel like there's another one still. Makoto's got a nice tall ceiling. I wouldn't say that uh, every character in this game has a tall ceiling. Chun Li's cheap, but her ceiling is actually probably smaller than um, Ken, Yun, and Makoto. Ooh, nice. Tackle, tackle, headbutt. He loves to see it. I think that might be a little easier on Makoto than some characters. That headbutt looked like it hit kind of deep. Hi, hi, hi. Ah, there it is. Light headbutt is super common in this matchup for Yurian. Nice! Cheap! I saw a parry. Makoto got one parry. She died like the next frame, though. That was a little ugly. But RX played like he knew how the neutral. And he hit some juggles. I would give this to... I would probably give this to an in-practice RX most of the time. So it all depends on how well it, RX is in practice. This matchup I think is pretty even. It might be a little bit good for Makoto. I would estimate probably 5.5, 4.5 Makoto, but I'm not a Makoto or a Yurian, so take that with a grain of salt. Yurian has some weapons in this matchup. One, he's got a long dizzy bar, but I think Makoto does have a unique um, touch of dizzy on him that she doesn't have against most characters, but that doesn't matter too much because uh, this is SA1 Makoto. <laughs> Those parries. This will kill. Um, but it's a bit hard to stun Yurian, and the extra HP is good too. Hi. Um, Makoto has kind of bad wake up and also a long knockdown time so um, mirror stuff is good against her she has no escape tackle tackle but again love to see it oh that was horrible this is almost done this is makes up to win jump neutral jump was he trying to hit a was that parry on the way up looking for a headbutt yeah that was super tricky. That uh, low short was... It was very delayed. It was after Yurian already woke up. I think if he would have woke up headbutt, uh, Makoto would have been able to take a throw after the fact in time. But I think the low short whiffs on wake up headbutt. Don't quote me. I don't know if Yurian's actually low immune on wake up when he does headbutt. He is airborne, but I don't know if he's low immune. Because some of the wake up low immune moves... I mean, some of the wake up airborne moves are not low immune. I think Yurian is, though. Uh, yeah, I will. That's next on my list. I've got it open. He could have come down with a jump normal. Ooh, that's, that hurts. That could have been really bad. I think double dash punch was maybe better there. But he got the reset, so that's really good too. Again, empty jump low. Going for parries in places like that is super risky. And if that wasn't parried, um, if it was blocked, for example... Um, Dash punch was a red parry. Konban wa Minaha Sama? What the fuck is that character? I think it's Sama. I think you usually write for for everyone, for Minna, you type uh Mi na 
But for Minasan, you don't have the Itten. And I think the same is for Minasama. But I'd never even hear anyone say Minasama. But I think it's just um I think it's just Mina and not Minna. Nice. This should kill with a headbutt or a tackle. I have not been following the OOT prototype leaks. The only Pog Champ I've seen that kind of rivals the original Pog Champ is the fucking. the Pepe. Pog. That one's as good. In fact, it might even be a little bit better than Gutex. Wow! The thing is, if you are including yourself in the group, you say Mina. And if you're not including yourself in the group, it's uh, Mina-san or Mina-sama. So if you're just saying everyone plus me, it's just Mina. I think that's the distinction. Oh, that, mm, that was horrible. What went wrong? What was he trying to do? Why was it not just Crutch Fierce? There's like no reason you wouldn't Crutch Fierce there. I think he probably like, I don't know. Because if you buffer it, you still get it. Who knows what happened. Maybe the parry was an accident. This is still okay. No, it's horrible now. He had to get that mix-up. Things get catastrophic when that mix-up doesn't pan out. Because um, you also get no meter. So you have a good screen position, but like, look at Yurian's meter right now, it's empty. That's true, Marth says Mina and he doesn't, um, he's not including himself. Mina, mi te te Oh, that could have been a jumping combo. Yurian's jumping combos are a bit awkward. If you can't get Crutch Fierce, then his best option is like fucking garbage. He can get Stand Strong into um, EX Headbutt, but that's kind of a bitch to even execute. And that's also not always available. And then the next best thing after that is like the fucking Punch TC, which sucks. Jab Strong. SF5 would give you a better opinion on that than the one that's actually in the game. I think it does combo into tackle and EX tackle, but you don't usually kind of do that in this game. And also, the range of jab strong is a lot smaller than you would probably guess. Yurian's buttons are actually kind of good in this matchup. You want pokes here versus Makoto. You want something with a lot of active frames that can kind of prevent it from just moving in. Ooh. Okay, that's good. That's super good. Yeah, now this is the thing again. This is like absolutely comeback material. Oh, now it's great. Ooh. Cool. Unfortunately, every time that Makoto got a parry, she's, he's dead. Every time Makoto got a parry, she reset her own juggle limit. So she kept on landing on the mirror, and even though there should have been no juggle potential left, all the parries put it back to zero each time. So she would have landed into the mirror and able, been able to like block on the ground if she hadn't gone for all those parries. The headbutt might have been good there. I think he was afraid of just landing on a jump, jump roundhouse, though. Oh my god, this fucking control. This is super good position. Two mix-ups here. Never mind, only one mix-up. No, two. Mimora's blocking was perfect! That's like as good as it gets for Yurian in neutral, and he couldn't find anything. Nice punish. Oh, it's over. He's dead. <laughs> it's wrong super. Poof. That was good blocking. It's very scary. I mean, it's not too hard to block your way out of one mix-up. Basically, after Yurian puts up the mirror, he has one mix-up that leads to a full combo, and if it doesn't pan out, he has another mix-up that leads to just, like, a hit. A little bit.
bit of damage. And if he gets the mix-up leads to a full combo, he builds a bunch of meter back, and then he'll probably, after his next mix-up, have enough meter for a third mirror. If he started with two. Hello, hello. Yurian is very meter reliant compared to most characters. He is dead. He is toast. This follow-up combo should kill. So run us, stand fierce, dash punch. It didn't kill. It looked like that wasn't a heavy dash punch. Did he go for like medium dash punch and try to charge it? Because it didn't look like he charged it either. He might have just undercharged on accident. I think that's a thing in this game, but I don't know that much about Makoto. Like input wise, I know about fighting her. I'm quite good at fighting Makoto, I think. She's actually one of the characters I have the most experience against. Ooh, it's okay. It's a start. Yeah, this is gonna hit her. Oh, but the mirror, it was light mirror. That's the smarter mirror to put for where he was, but medium would have incidentally been better. There we go. Makes it panned out. He didn't approach much though. Ooh, I like your in here. Yep, there we go. Plom. Yeah, I know. She, I'm pretty sure she can do that, and I'm pretty sure it's optimal, right? Hard punch into charging dash punches, but most people don't do it because it's a pain in the ass. But I think it's stronger than just doing a hard dash punch. Look at all those months. And I'm not even playing balloons. <laughs> After the initial parry, if you see that that's what she parried. Oh, cool juggle? Cool juggle! Yo, reversal something got stuffed. Yeah, that was smart, that was smart. No, that was a mirror. That was a fuck up. I saw that. Okay. I think he wanted medium mirror after that knockdown. But he couldn't have gone on the other side or anything. It was just for pressure. I think. Dankies. I'll take a look at that. I'm rooting for RX, I have to admit. Anyway, Makoto committed right as he threw one of those mirrors. Cat Jam. Message me these on Discord so I don't forget. Oh, uh, that was unsafe. Yurian's punish wouldn't have been huge because of that positioning. It would have been like low forward or something. Stand strong. What the fuck was that? That was deliberate too. Oh, uh, he OS the next parry. One parry into throw guaranteed works. A headbutt? Yep, unblockable. Is that a dash forward headbutt? Low strong. Wonder what that was about. Caught a backdash. I guess he was reading it. Or maybe he was trying to go under a neutral jump. Or something that would do both. I don't know if Makoto would jump there. Low strong would have been very good on block, I feel. Oh, he's just trying to get the corner. He had a jump in. There we go. He had two jump in combos he could have had. But Yurian's jump in combos are kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, he's dead to the next hit. Oh, there it was. Comboing out of the X is really hard in this game, so that was kind of cool. That, like, requires a very specific kind of hit. Okay, I like this. He's just, yep, 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 this is going great. He got a ton of meter back for that, and he's got amazing position. No, she got hit! Oh, no! Do not get hit by that. That was a medium fucking tackle! No! Yuri, no! What is this? Oh, cool. Cool. It's very important to know what buttons go through Yurian's mirror. I know that myself for a bunch of Oros ones. But I was not expecting the two medium kick would go through mirror. Yeah, that mirror positioning is good. Yeah. Very, very difficult position. Yeah, there's a lot of tech for Aegis. It's not all Yurian tech is the thing. Anti-Yurian tech is, like, very prolific. There's a lot of ways you can give Yurian a hard time. That's one of the reasons he's a great, well-designed character. It's because you have tech that's specific to fighting him. A bit of disjoint. Two medium kick is probably the most fucking disjointed normal in this whole game. That move is bullshit.
Makoto's down medium kick is one of the best um, uh, buttons in this whole game in terms of uh, hitbox versus hitbox. <laughs> that crouch jab. He actually could have done some more. Fierce, fierce. Throw. Oh, he should have done the TC maybe? No, that's not how that works. I was picturing um, Dudley's TC. Urien starts with the um, starts with the high, then goes overhead. Oh, this is suddenly like Makoto's. Okay, never mind. It's Urien's again. Urien should win this most of the time. Was that? Did he fuck up, or was that he, what he wanted? Whoa. He actually could have killed there with an EX but I think. Nice. What if two medium kick was a low? Ken Crush Medium Punch is better in terms of its returns. It's better for other reasons too. But I wouldn't call it the greatest counter poke. Or like not even as good maybe. Nice, big damage. Head tackle. Another failed tackle. He wants tackle, tackle, head button. He can't get it. Oh no. Okay, he's getting stunned back with this. <laughs> is he? Just poked him right through the mirror. Just like fuck it. Oh, this is this is kill, isn't it? Okay, I thought that would stun. Oh, what the fuck? You're in so tall. I'm glad I don't have to worry about that. I'm glad I play as shorty. That's stupid. It's an overhead jump over hard punch. God, I love Yurian versus Makoto. I didn't even realize. This is a fun matchup. This is not live. Oh, this is, could be something. This could be something. Low didn't pan out. Oh, this is, this is, this is maybe even, yeah. Nice, no, got the, oh, he should have just some crush face maybe. Okay. There's probably an EX meter hiding behind. No, he got the meter from the tackle. If that was parried, he would have died. He would have actually died. If you get parried, you don't get meter. That was a super risky tackle. I would have woken up with high parry there. <laughs> That's not true. You actually do get meter if you get hit in this game. Yeah, that's why fireballs don't build meter. It's because um, a fireball builds meter when it's blocked and not when it's thrown. So if the opponent parries the fireball, the guy who threw the fireball doesn't get any meter. But the guy who parries did get meter. Because parries build a little bit. I don't remember that. I didn't play ST. Also, what a steal. SA1 has more of a pure mix-up. SA2 relies on you landing grab. And your non-grab stuff is weak. Wow. That looks super weird. She backdashed into the knee drop. Okay, I may do that, but not right now. That mirror! Incoming tackle to cancel mirror. Nope, never mind. He got it without spending any bar, which is super good. <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> you guys see that? Round start fucking, um, the X chop. Oh, EX mirror? Regular light mirror. Aw, uh, she's out. Yeah, that's bad. It's possible to react. Nice. Oh, that's you get a link there. It's hard to do, though. This kills, yeah. Nice charging. I said this kills, but like... Yurian easily could have not had charge there. And if he didn't have charge, a kill combo is actually really hard. I think Yurian can punish dash punches with Crutch Fierce, but not always, only sometimes. They have to be like close dash punches. Dash punch can recover close or far away, depending on how it hits.
It's hard in this game to keep charge. These Yurian players are experts at it. In SF5, Yurian can just build charge at the start of any combo. And this game requires a lot more forward thinking. Yeah, Yurian's Crutch Fierce is like 9 frame or something. I don't remember the amount, or 8. It's not too slow. It's noticeably slower than Oro's, which is like 4. Oro, close strong, I think hits on frame 5. Ooh. <laughs> you can do other combos instead of Tackle, Tackle, Headbutt. That's just the optimal one. You can do Tackle, EX, Tackle, regular Tackle, Stand Fierce, and that's free. I don't think it works on all characters, though. But it's like a fairly easy combo. It doesn't even take a charge partition. It just takes very wonky charge buffering. The Tackle, Tackle is the hard bot. The Tackle, Headbutt is not so hard. Well, rather, the Tackle, Headbutt is easy, but it's impossible if... Um, if your initial tackle tackle wasn't good enough. Yurian has a lot of stuff that's not super difficult. You don't have to do like the crazy hard RX stuff. That was probably max damage. No, it couldn't have been. Anti-air EX headbutt is three frame or three JP, right? Or is it two? I feel like it's three. So he could have just had tackle into tackle into fierce and that might have done more damage than two at Renos. The two at Roundhouse might have been supposed to be a hard tackle. I think someone has like a ridiculously fast move in Tekken. It's like um, Yoshimitsu from one of his stances has like a fucking four frame move or something like that. It's like something that's not really relevant for punishing and whatnot. Name every true reversal move in third strike. No, most of them are supers. Flash? I don't even know anything about Tekken. Seven is, like, kind of fast, right? Like, that's got to be one of the faster moves in the game. This is staying close. Every non-super reversal move? There's not many. Um, hard DP from Ken. I think all DPs from Akuma? Definitely hard DP from Akuma. Um, oh shit. It's like not many, dude. I don't know if any, any from Emi's flash kicks have true invincibility. There's a lot of almost reversal moves. Uh, EX DPs from, I think, all Shadows, barring Sean. So I guess Ryu and Ken, since they're the two with fucking EX DPs that are left. Um... EX flash kick maybe? EX Oniyama from Oro? EX jet upper? I think so. Yurians don't really do that that much, but I think it is invincible. Same with uh, EX up kick from Yun. I'm pretty sure that's invincible. EX spinning bird is, um, it has invincibility, but the invincibility wears off before it hits. So it depends on like what you count for like a true invincible move. I think Remy's is invincible. With throw into another throw. Oh no, I don't think he wanted that. I think he wanted to tackle into that. And it, he he got hit out of the tackle and he still did the cancel. Tackle into EX Mary is usually good. It's hard to punish. Of the ones I listed, honestly, Orozoniyama is probably the best one. Feels good playing a top tier. EX Scratch, I think it does, but don't quote me. The thing is, it's only invincible until the first active frame, and the first active frame for that move is kind of small. I'm pretty sure it's unthrowable. In fact, her non-EX ones might be unthrowable. Pretty sure EX is invincible for Elena. Like, 80% sure. If you want my actual unironic hope, it's Adon. Hmm, that was like him cashing out, but like, I wonder if he could have done anything else there. What was that? That was horrible! He telegraphed what he was doing. 
Kind of cool seeing a uh, neutral jump jab, or jump jab in general for Yurian has active frames until it lands. Kind of neat. The one guy who wants Ada. Ada's cool. Eagle, he'd be kind of cool. Now I want like characters who haven't managed to break out of fucking whatever. Let's get Joe. It's time to finally get Joe from Street Fighter 1. I would actually not be terribly surprised if they did Joe. Retsu would be a more interesting Street Fighter 1 character. Since he has ties to the lore. No, oh, that sucks. Anti-air parry into Crutch Fierce is a way worse version of Oro's anti-air parry into Stand Strong. Nice. Cool parry. Didn't even get anything, but if he did air normal, I'm not even sure if it would have hit. Mimora makes this look really difficult. Oh, that's... He actually had Crutch Fierce there, I think. What is this? Okay, it's leading to an unblockable. What a weird starter. EX something got stuffed. What the fuck EX move could that have been? Like, she has no EX there. That's good. That's super weird. Did he get it on accident? Alright, this is great for Yurian. This is fantastic. Oh, okay. Nice little short. Very well placed. Whoo! Jump back parry into jump fierce. This is over. I want 12. I want 11. Give me 11. 11's like 12, but he's got a head like a hammerhead shark. Superior character. No, Necro's like the prototype. There were a bunch before Necro. There is an actual 11. I'm not even joking. I didn't make him up. You can find him on the fucking CFN, the Capcom CRI, Shadowloo CRI. I would unironically not be mad if it was just a fucking evil character. Necro would be good. I think Necro, if he was released today, would be really popular. I think the main reason like people don't care about Necro is they don't know a thing about Necro. Necro is a super unique and super fun playstyle, both to fight as and to play as. Or to, to fight as or to fight against. I would be happy with Ingrid. I want the other two, though. The other two are both cooler than Ingrid. It's such a shame that, like, Ingrid was supposed to debut along two other characters, and both the other characters are cooler than her. Daisuke, Dajima, and Rook. You can see them in promotional art for uh, Capcom Fighting All-Stars. What the fuck was that? It's alright though. You're in getting hit midair is ideal at this point. Bottom meter. Effie is the girl. Again! Has that worked yet? I don't think so. <laughs> El Forte. I think El Forte, if there wasn't such silliness with his, his gameplay style, people would have liked him. Damned. It's Morgan, and she's using the fucking sprite they made from Darkstalkers 1. The one that's in, like, CVS 2 and fucking NBC 2. It's Morgan using her original sprites. Capcom's just like, we made these sprites and we're going to use them. 
that sprite has gotten like has generated more money than any other sprite in any other video game. That sprite's been in the most fighting games of any sprite. That's probably not true. Actually, I wonder what the answer to that is. What what sprite has been in the most fighting games? What model? A lot of fighting games, they redo the characters' designs every single game. Oh, big, 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 big. How many tackles? Four. I should say three. I think probably a KOF character probably has it, right? Because a lot of characters in KOF got drawn once and then went like several years without. And KOF for a long time had a new game every year. ST sprites would be a good one too. Or not ST, but like World Warrior sprites. Street Fighter have a furry bait character? I don't think so. Blanca's the furry bait. Nice. Wow, I said it and then fucking there it was. Oh, that's bad. He didn't get the mirror. See that? He wanted the mirror, but he didn't build it. Because his he was parried. Cool. Crouch fierce into to knee drop. Probably reaction to a parry. Minot was gonna be the furry bait. I forgot about that. They should have gone through with it. For those who aren't in the know, Minot was originally gonna have cat ears, and then they were just like, eh, there's no reason that she should have cat ears. And then they were like, she's gonna have a cat headdress, and then they just didn't use that. But it's in one of her costumes, I think. But it was gonna be in her default outfit. The reason they like chose not to, they were just like, why would she have cat ears? And they couldn't think of a reason. Oh my god, how did Mimora steal us back? Okay, this is now back in Yurian's favor, I think. Yeah. When they showed off all the um, silhouettes for the Season 3 characters... Was it Season 3? I think it was Season 2, wasn't it? Um, and not High Cat Ears. And that's why everyone was thinking it was uh, Satsuki or something. Nice. Cool. That would have hit twice if it hit her, I think. So that was, And that would have knocked down and put her in the corner. So that was a pretty instrumental parry. Twelve is the furry bait character. This is yeah. I was gonna say this is really hard. <laughs> he didn't have any sort of like neutral control. And he was down so much health. And he had mid screen. Positioning is a lot for Yurian. Most characters I would say in third strike I don't care about positioning almost at all. Like I don't like getting cornered by Dudley or Ken. I like getting cornered by most other characters because that means I can stay doing some unblockable stuff. Um, but it is really important to not get cornered by Yurian. Like, ever. Do not let him corner you. Oh, that was deliberate. That was supposed to be whiffed. He accidentally got it to hit. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Oh... This is going close. Necro can be a little scary to get cornered by. He does have better combos in the corner. It depends on what character you play. Like, if you can get down back fierce six times, it's probably really scary. But, um... I can't. So it's just like, well, he gets a combo out of a neutral throw. He gets slightly more annoying spinning hook pressure. I think there's actually catalogs and dinosaurs too, isn't there? I don't remember. It's a neat game. There's a car. There are dinosaurs. There actually are disturbingly few Cadillacs and dinosaurs. In fact, I think there's only one Cadillac. And there aren't many dinosaurs either. If there was any licensed character in SF5, I think that Iori would be my favorite one. 
I would also accept um, Jin from Tekken. <laughs> nice, good roundhouse. Terry would be probably the best pick from our uh, SNK. He's a more Street Fighter like character than, say, Kyo. Me. Kyo is not that marketable, I feel. Or, like, he kind of is. He's, like, a little bit boring, but not boring in a real way where the boring is the point. He's definitely got some, like, he's kind of cool, you know what I mean? He's, like, a cool guy. In a kind of carefree but powerful kind of way. You can't make this comeback. No way. Yix Mir? Yeah. That was a little bit desperate. He would have preferred to not spend meter. But it's um, better than losing, and he could have lost there. When I think about e marketable um, KOF characters, there actually aren't that many. Terry's a good one. Ryo is not great, but he's he's okay. Yuri's quite marketable. Mai is extremely marketable. Um, K Dash, I would say, is marketable. King a little bit. I would say King, yeah. Probably not. Any of the bark the boxers. There's quite a few boxer characters now. Joe, I'm gonna say yes to Joe a little bit. Probably not Andy. Maybe Ash. Wow, there's a king, a duck king, and a king of dinosaurs. Imagine if they were all in the same game so you could make that as your team. Robert, a little bit. It's hard to say who's more marketable between Robert and Rio. Probably Rio. A lot of the cooler designs, like Sylvie or um, Nelson, are kind of like new, so... You know, they don't really have like a, a memorable kind of component yet. I would say the top would be probably Mai, or Yuri, or K Dash, after Yuri. Yuri's number one. In terms of marketable SNK characters, but none of them are that marketable. Like there are like ten extremely marketable Street Fighters at least. Oh Kim, he would be all right. He would be a good one. Leona, maybe. I don't think so. Rock, probably, yeah. Geese, yes. Geese has been in KOF, so he counts. He's a Fatal Fury character, same as um, Terry. Ooh, there's pressure! Guile is marketable. Um, who else? Honestly, Blanc is quite marketable. Yeah. He's like the original weird guy. You know what I mean? Like the entire premise of Street Fighter is people from around the world coming together to fight using different martial arts. And... Um, Blanca's like the token, like using a martial art no one's ever heard of. And he started that. 
You know what I mean? I mean, it's all ripped off of the movie Bloodsport. Ugh. All fighting games exist because Bloodsport was a movie. All fighting games exist because of a shitty movie starring J.C. Van Damme. Remember that. Never forget. Wake up every morning and thank J.C. Van Damme for fighting games. The most marketable third strike character is probably Makoto Ibuki or Dudley. When I think of the face of Street Fighter 3, I would probably say maybe... I mean, technically Makoto only came in for third strike, whereas Dudley's been there since the start. Or like Elena. Now Alex is ostensibly the main character. But kind of Makoto kind of represents what Street Fighter 3 is all about. Kind of a new school play style. Rushdown oriented. And kind of a mix up on whatever uh, whatever character designs you were expecting. That dizzy bar is looking kind of scary. Okay, she's dead. That was a super good EXO, but... Me. My Oro. Street Fighter 3 is one of the old games that the most people love, but also one of the old games that the most people hate. I'm rooting for X. It's scary. Hold on, I can't talk about dumb characters right now. Visually marketable, I would probably say Sean, actually. Yeah, is the most marketable third strike character. I mean, Street Fighter 3 character. He is... I, I would say he is the face of Street Fighter 3, because he is literally, like, the new blood. Shoulda. Sean is, like, the one I should have said. It's absolutely Sean. Ooh, that Sin Strong, if it hit, it would have led to stuff. Would have led to, like, Sin Strong tackle fucking mirror or something like that. Oh, that sucked to eat that jump medium kick. Oh, no, it's getting worse and worse. I think he reacted to... Okay, okay, this is something. This is something. This is something. This is something. This is, like, over. Ah, oh, yep. She had to weather a storm to live there. That was a good steal. He was almost out there. Yikes, drop it around start. I say one Makoto can't, like, fucking spend meter like that. I guess she can, because she had full meter. Wow. That's not, like, super hard to do, but it's kind of cool whenever you see it. Yo, you don't even need partitioning for that. <gasps> the berries! <laughs> that's not super hard to do, but you have to know that that's the sequence that Yurian's going to do. So that was really cool. That's not, like, a crazy hard parry, though. That's just really smart parry. It's a highly intelligent parry. It showed knowledge of Yurian's options. I've, like, done that parry before, but it's... It's not common. You know what I mean? He did some low parries to make it easier, but what Yurian did actually didn't require any low parries, I think. Ugh, she dashed punched through the mirror! I can forward dash through the mirror, but most of my buttons don't go through EX mirror. This is, like, good for Yurian, but not over. Ooh, now it's, now it's fair, I think. Now I think it's fair. Ugh... This could go either way. Oh. Oh, dash forward, jump forward, fierce. That's a hard read. No, he had to punish that neutral jump. That was a bad neutral jump. That was a neutral jump read, but it was a, it was a bad read. But Yurian left it. This is good positioning. This is good positioning. Does he want that? I feel like he wants, like, low short tackle. No! The health! He needs that! Oh, this is over. No way. This is not happening. Yeah, there it is. There were a lot of times where he did just, like, low short, and then, like, pause, and then mirror, and it really felt like they were supposed to be low short tackle mirror. That one he had to walk forward a bit, so I don't know. Ugh. That was a good set. Mimor is too good. No, I missed the first round. Sp spoilers, we know Yun wins it.
That's a former Kodos Crush Medium Kick is still pretty good. It's your anti-air. That's nice. The same medium kick as a poke. You don't see that too often from Yon. It's not too bad. Yon is usually just not very committal if he can help it. Ooh, this is this is horrible. He's gonna be at like twenty five percent at the end of this. Oh. Uh. I know the drill. Oh, what was that? Is that supposed to be a throw? You just fuck it up? Okay, he could have killed with that. Just dropped it. Nice. Very safe anti air. Oh, it's parry low strong. Uh huh. Can he tackle through this or not tackle? Shoulder. He didn't try. I wonder if it was possible. It might have been. The red parry was. I don't think those. No, that was a punish. That was a punish, right? No, that's not a punish. I'm pretty sure that's zero, isn't it? If you block ex fireball, it's minus six, but you put, get pushed out. I think. But I think if you double parry, it's zero. I think. I think Ken just committed. That was a really committal thing to do. That's super scary to just stay in short dash points on a scenario that's not even a punish. I imagine Sho knows that, but he might not have. It might have. It might have occurred to him after the fact. Cool. Ken might have been able to come down and uh, jump hard kick. But he had no super, so the follow-up after the jump hard kick was hard. Maybe he could have landed and swept. Ooh, big damage. It's way too far in the screen to get... Oh, okay, okay, reset. Really good reset. Oh, that's supposed to be low strong uppercut, right? Nice, good confirm. Those are scary to go for every time. It's like not a super hard combo, but it's just it's it's a terrifying combo. Because uh, dash punch is so bad on block. And the link low short, low short is... It's not hard, but it's easy to drop. Really good screen control right now. He's not letting him move. That was supposed to be TC, I could tell. Oh no! Oh no! That was coaching opponent. He did that from really far out. Crouching opponent makes you real longer. That probably wouldn't have been possible on a standing opponent with that far. I don't know. It would have been harder. <laughs> Generally speaking, parrying is suicide versus skin a yun. There's only a few things you can parry where it's good. Almost always yun can just cancel whatever you parried. And it'll beat whatever you did after your parry. Unless you parry something point blank and throw it instantly. Or... um. If you parry like a special move or something that Yun can't cancel, for example, towards medium kick, those things are good to parry. Nice. Oh, that was smart. Okay. That was. I don't know if I would have spent that. No, Yun's meter is not precious. Okay, okay, okay. He got a ton of damage out of that Gene. If I was Ken, I would have. Oh, he's dead. Jesus. Um, the thing is, other supers generally trade with Gene. And non-super attacks just lose. Like, they can't trade with Gene. And Yun attacks fast enough during Gene that you usually cannot get an attack off between. Like, not even like a low short or something like that. Yun's attacks basically have like effectively like two frame startup during Gene. Plus, like that combined with the good range and the impossibility to trade with them means that challenging Gene is almost impossible, which is why people just block. Gene would actually, I've said this before, Gene would actually be um, 
a relatively, like, it would be, like, okay. It would be strong, but it would be okay if you couldn't command grab during it. Is the presence of the command grab really makes it crazy. Maybe you had to do, like, just overhead low mix-ups. Or, like, normal throws. It would be okay. Nice. Nice! I think it was too far away for a car DP. Car DP versus Twins is really hard, but he was close to the corner. Mid screen, you can't get it at all. But I think he was close enough to the corner that car DP would have worked. Don't quote me on that, I'm not a Ken. Nice. Delayed universal overhead. Very nice, very nice. A lot of meter back. Oh, TC into... Nope. That was almost certainly close medium kick cancel to super. Someone hit it would have just killed. But it got parried. Didn't hit midair. It's not too bad. Oh, tried to stop short, but can actually punish it. That was nice. Unfortunately, the TC just wasn't in range. Wow, that was nice. That's one of those moves. The low strong should air reset, but the EXDP actually hits so fast that the air reset doesn't happen yet. You can see that every now and then in this game. The low strong has to hit pretty low for that to be possible. The EXDP has to be the earliest possible cancel, and then it has to hit on its first like active frame, I think. Ugh. Yun bleeds. That's like the big difference in this matchup. Ken only landed like six or seven attacks, I feel, in that matchup, in that round. And Yun just died. Nice. OTC. Just like button into light uppercut. Or, like, any short super combo just does so much. That's true for every character versus Yun, though. Just for the record, Yun's HP is really shitty. He would be, like, an 800 HP character. 850, I think. Somewhere around there. I think Yun and Yang are tied for second least HP. Is that right? No, it's Ibuki, I think. I think it's Akuma, then Ibuki, then Twins. Pretty sure. Nice. Ibuki and Twins also have tiny throw range. That's like a little thing about Yun, you don't really think about that much. This throw range is kind of garbage. Nice, it hit. That wasted a ton of any time. That jump point was kind of scary. Oh, what went wrong there? Twins less than Ibuki. All right. Confirmation. Nice. That was uh, probably OS at the range. Buffered cancel. No, don't parry. Don't do it. Don't do it. Nice. Just dashed. Dash throw. I've done that before. Good whiff punish. Not easy to whiff punish you on stand brown house. Well, maybe it is for Ken. It's not easy for Aura. I don't have like a Shoto low forward equivalent button. Yeah, dash punching is actually like a really big part of Yun. But it's... A lot of people like don't really do that stuff. Like close, strong, stand short, dash punch, or low, short, low, short, dash punch. A lot of Yuns just like do pokes until they're in Gene, you know what I mean? Or like dive kick mix-ups. You don't see the conversions that much. 
There's a lot of stuff for Yon you never see because the emphasis on Gene. A really good example is EX combos. Yon can do like short uh, jab, short, strong, um, EX uppercut, dash punch, for example, and you like almost never see that combo unless it's going to kill. The damage is quite good for a one bar combo. You should jump Light Cake as an anti air, it's super cool. It's very unrewarding. But uh, in terms of hitbox, it's really good. And if it's parried, it's not very risky. You eat like a jump run house. Yeah, I think it can fall out on crouchers too. Yun was truly blessed with his supers. There is no bad one. Ironically, SA2 is probably the worst one. But it's still, like, good. You've still got, like, quite a few good confirms into it, and it has tons and tons of meter, which is nice. Yeah, SA2 actually has the most meter of any super. It's the longest three bar super. Whoa! Is that supposed to be meaty? Meaty dash punch? Dash punch is one of those things where it's constant active frames, and the later it hits, the more the safer it is. Like a Kemi drill. So, like, a meaty enough dash punch probably is safe, but that seems like a big meme. Nice punish. He is good with that dash punch, now I'm thinking about it. He is kind of clean with that. Kikosha is not too bad for Chun. It's just annoying that it's one bar. If Kikosha was two bars, a lot of Chun leads might actually pick it. Because otherwise, apart from that, it's mostly the same as um, SA2, except cheaper. And a better anti-air. There's like certain things that Chun-Li can do that are kind of cool if she's got SA1. For example, uh, anti-air close run house into Super 1 works. Does not work into Super 2. <laughs> Chance of another Dragon's Dogma fly through. I've been thinking about that game recently. I fucking love Dragon's Dogma. I've been thinking about how I don't do many streams where I just play a game casually. Anymore. It's always like a game I've never played or a game I'm trying to fucking stream for YouTube. Or like a fighting game thing. It's never like me just replaying a game I love. And I love Dragon's Dogma. Dragon Quest 2 already did. Twice. Nice. Boss. Indivisible is never getting finished. I thought it was out. I thought it was done. There's more to it. Did we get like chapter one or something? Sad. Meaty close fierce. I kind of feel like that's a little bit of a liability for Yun. I know why Yuns do it. But it's like really bad on parry. It's just people usually don't parry it. It's also not very rewarding. It just feels like a liability to me. I would feel better knowing a Yelm is mixing in close fierce than if he wasn't. You know what I mean? It's like easier to fight the Yuns who have that as an option. But maybe that's Aura talking. Because that move is like really good for me to parry, I guess. Wow! Jaded with a heavy DP. Ah. Uh, I think he went for multiple air parries. Ooh, that was good. Chip out? No. Yun has to anticipate chip out there, or like any character does. So throw becomes a very strong option. Of course, chip out is quite good if, if they go for throw, so it's a, it's a mix-up. And the parry direction is a mix-up too. And then what you're parrying is a mix-up, so it's just, you know, usually you'll die. A lot of um, pros often criticize the the fact that like there are no ch checkmates in this game, but actually you can create such a difficult scenario between like throw and like when you do your meaty and what your meaty is. You've got like four interlaid mix-ups there: the starting parry direction of your meaty, the timing of your meaty, the continuation after the initial parry for your meaty. Ooh, 
and th whether you're doing immediate all in not a throw. That's a fat gamble to live. Let's just call the Goblin Fort. Shadow Fort. Oh, okay. I can see that being a super hard input. I never thought about it. Maybe it's not that hard. Maybe just hold forward. Then you go to down. Nice. Parrying to jump roundhouse. Normally you see jump jab fierce there. But I don't know if roundhouse is in any way worse. Um, if it's me, I just make every hit knockdown. If Ken wants um, non-knockdown into super, then he can just use medium uppercut. And if it's me, I probably just make have. I probably just have all of Ken's DPs have a little bit more range. Maybe not like a vacuum, but just a little bit more range. I know it sounds kind of like heresy to buff Ken, but this is in a scenario where we're buffing and nerfing everyone a little bit. I think Ken could use a little bit more DP on more range on non-light DPs. It's silly the light's like the most the most ranged one. For Ken, light DP is just the best, you know what I mean? Like there are just occasional scenarios where you want the other ones. But generally speaking, the light is the best in every metric. Best damage because you've got the double light DP stuff. Best Oki. Best um combo versatility. Nice. I think it's also the start the fastest, but don't quote me on that. I'm actually not sure. Nice. Good pickup. It was like a good combo and a good pickup. He's alive. Um, I want to watch something else that's 45 minutes long. You want to play this game or what? Really nervous? Did you fucking make it or something? Is that why you wanted me to watch it? Wow, I didn't even know. I'll be blown away no matter what. I only know about half the characters in Ford Strike. So, like, half of it is going to be some crazy shit. The only character that might not impress me is Oro. Because I actually know a little bit about how he works. But if it's a task combo video, chances are you you found some cool shit. Ugh. Generally speaking, you can do a lot with TAS in the SF3 engine. Generally speaking, TAS combos in SF3 are way more radical than what you'll see in real matches. Ooh. Yeah, if you can just like freely, because if you're tassing, charge partitioning is nothing. There's no difficulty whatsoever if you've got like visible charge meters or like you're counting the frames. It'd be kind of funny to just show like a task combo of just like the longest possible storage of a charge, or like the longest possible storage of um, lightning legs. Or we just see Chun-Li sit there for like two full seconds and then lighting legs. And it's just like, wow. Uh, it didn't pan out this time. Punishing this is a bit of a pain. That was a decent punish. I think that was a good punish. I would have done medium into super maybe. No, that introduces the possibility of parry. Activate right before Ken wakes up is optimal, I think. Yeah, lightning legs can be stored in the same way a charge move can. You know how you have to hit um, a kick button five times to get lightning legs? There's a timer constantly going down that resets that number to zero. And every time it gets to the every time the timer gets down to zero, it resets. Lightning legs, the number of kicks you've stored goes away, and um, the timer gets restored to full. And the timer is pretty long, and you just have to hit five kicks within that timer. 
I didn't do a I did I didn't do a great job explaining it, did I? You can do the first four kicks of lightning legs and then like kinda wait a bit for the timer to get low and then do the fifth kick. It's pretty long, it's longer than a charge. It's about twice as long as a charge. So picture the charge the charge move length in this game. It's like maybe not twice as long, it's maybe like one point five times as long. It'd be funny to see someone charge, like, down back until they've got, like, all but one frame of charge and then walk forward the maximum possible number of frames and then get that last possible frame of charge and then do the charge move. I could do something like that myself. Yeah, that uh, lightning leg timer only exists for Chun-Li because she's the only character in the game with that input. And it is quite helpful for her that it's that long. Because it lets you store it for meaties. Basically the only purpose of lightning legs in this game is meaties. It is quite a good meaty. There's also only one, only one teleport in this game. 100 frames on the nose for the full timer. Cool. What's the charge number of frames? Do you know that one offhand? It's like 60 or something? Or 50? That sounds kind of familiar. Oh, it was regular up kick. He wanted um Gine up kick. But his timer ran out right then. Seems like the Yuns always get the Gine up kick. It's surprising to see the regular one. Oh, nice. This is over. I wouldn't have even done that combo. I was just on shoulders. It's scary to even watch that. These young players, they're crazy. They know they won't drop the combos. This is actually going really close. Nice, good idea. tier. Yun doesn't have any normal that like wings clean as an A tier, I don't think. Maybe close medium kick. Usually he needs to either like space it in a very particular way so that he's not getting hit by an air normal. Or he has to um OS parry. Who's the most Chad character in Street Fighter? No, I have no idea how fucking Crota does it. He's a wizard. He takes fireball. Hakan? Maybe. Hakan? I don't know. A lot of the interactions Hakan has is him defending himself. That's not very Chad. Necro is an okay answer. But not a great one, I feel. Dudley is a good one. Dudley is extremely Chad. Dudley doesn't give a... Oh, double DP? Oh, we got it! Ooh, that's hard. That requires Kara in the corner. Whew. 
Pretty sure. Pretty sure that requires Kara versus Twins. You can't double DP at all versus Twins mid-screen. And in the corner, I think you need the Kara to do it. Dudley is a super good answer for the most Chad character. It might be Ken, actually. Ken's, like, rich. He's in super great shape. He's, like, canonically one of the strongest fighters in the world. Um, he's moves everywhere, like, confident in his shit. He's married. <laughs> Rufus? <laughs> Rufus is, like, the fucking... I don't know. He is, but it's, like, the other... It's the other kind of Chad. Gil. Gil gets beaten up canonically in this game by like two different people at least. Dan is like the exact opposite of a Chad. Just because you want Dan to win doesn't mean he's a Chad. Just because he's charming. Rufus definitely has Chad elements. I feel like Cody's a little bit too punished to be a Chad. At least old Cody. Dan Cody, I don't know. I mean Dan Cody, um uh Mayor Cody. I think Rufus is a hot girlfriend. I think her name is Candy. I think she's ditzy. But it's been a long time since I've seen Rufus's like SF4 intro and outro, which I think is her only appearance. Uh, I have no idea who that works on and who it doesn't. There's no, like, I shouldn't say there's no flag for crouching in SF3. Well, there might actually be. Generally speaking, it's not really like, is are they crouching? It's more like, um, how tall are they? So I wouldn't be surprised if it hit, like, crouching Urien, for example, because he's got a really tall crouch. But I don't know the list offhand or anything. Abigail is like Chad in the same way that like... <laughs> the Jack robots are in Tekken. You know what I mean? They're more like the Chad Stride kind of Chad. Where you're just flailing every limb. That's the variety of Chad that um, Abigail is. Ooh, that's a big starter. A lot of damage. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Ken. It's probably the number one. Ooh, very nice. The fake out actually being used. Who's the biggest virgin? Probably Evil Ryu. Akuma. <laughs> Ed has elements of both. Ed seems like the kind of person who would get laid super easy in real life. Same with Seth. Ah. I was certain Ken was going to do wake up hard DP sleeper. But I think he was a little afraid at the last round. If Ken parried that. It was Perry low forward super and Young couldn't have done anything about that. I mean, given that it was blocked, it should have been parryable. Uh, 
I would fuck SF5 Seth, and I wouldn't even tell him to be quiet. And I'm not ashamed of that. Was that a punish? That was an on-hit fireball, but that kind of looked like a punish. Nice, good catch. Wasted the whole Gene time. Oh my god, what a mess. <laughs> Bosses went for like four parries in a row. I mean, not parries, throws. Also, it was three. Nice. Wake up, Lady P. Makoto most cute. Elena's cute on purpose, and Makoto's cute on accident. They're different kinds of cute, but they are probably the most cute. I would say that Sakura is legitimately cute too. Wow, I think that worked! That is not an instant activate. You've got time to punish that. The thing is, Ken had already buffered that motion. Minato is extremely cute. Ibuki has components of cute and not cute. Who is a feminist? Poison? Maybe Falk? Viper, for sure Viper. Chun-Li, I think so, yeah. The, the idea of feminist kind of got co-opted by people who hate men, I feel. Feminism didn't used to mean hating men, but now it's like... You know, there are a lot of people who, who hate men who hide behind feminism in doing so. There's nothing wrong with feminism inherently, I think. If you treat feminism to be like fucking gender equality. Or like making sure women are getting their fucking, um... Ah, uh, that was... Scary. Oh, this is over. Now we got a million people who are just like, I'm an egalitarian because they're afraid to call themselves feminists because the definition of feminist has changed. I don't know if I've ever heard a woman say egalitarian. I think most women are not afraid of the word feminist, but a lot of men are, I think. To me, feminist and egalitarian are synonyms, but to a lot of people they're not. Oh, dash and throw from that? I have no idea how much the FGC sucks about it. Because women just don't exist. Which should... It might be evidence that... Um, uh, the FGC is really bad about it. Maybe if the FGC was more accepting, there would be more women. But also, like, I don't know. I don't know women are trying to fucking... Get good at fighting games, you know what I mean? Like, even beyond the culture stuff. Like, I have a fighting game YouTube channel, and my viewers are 
98% male. And it's not like I make anything that's like specifically male oriented. Or well, it's not like I try for it, I should say. It's because I'm gay. What the fuck? I just got called gay. Show one. <laughs> 